Greetings, everybody. Well, it's Tyler, and uh, Tyler's tip of the day is still going to be here concentrating on SoFi. I hope that uh, you did get in when I was first started recommending it some time ago. But if not, that's okay. Uh, I'm going to first start off by uh, clicking on this right here. Hopefully, bring my image down here so uh, <clears throat> it won't be taking up all the screen. And then we're going to move me up to the very top. And then we're going to move my display capture right there. Uh, below that and then I'm going to show you what I want to show you here and it's all about SoFi. Uh, well, what can you say? Look at this volume uh, peaking out here at 117 to show you compared to it historically if you go over here and click on this tab on Yahoo historical data now you can see for the one, two, three, four, five days Needed <laughs> um, I'm yeah, I'm at a loss of words. I really am. I'm uh wow, well, uh it's it is happening as I thought that it could it could possibly occur. We're definitely seeing that surge of volume. Uh what we want to do here, I'm gonna get over to statistics. <clears throat> Let's take a quick peek down here. And uh there's a lot of shares outstanding on this stock, so uh, it's not going to be moving around a lot. And look at the float, 797 million. It should be nice if they did a buyback. I think that would really make this. Whoa. Anyway, that's kind of scary to think about. But not a lot here held by insiders, but I like the institutional ownership. It's good. There were, last time I checked, 613 institutions. Uh, you can see the short interest right here percentage. Anyway, what I want to do, though, is show you some other things. Let's get in this, on this chart. Um, I'm going to back this out here, and what I'm looking at here and what I use uh, often is, and the term I'm going to be using is the one day, I'll click up at the top here, and I I love seeing this happen right here. This is what is called or is known as, uh, actually it wasn't a triple upside crossover technically, I guess in a way it was because, but it never actually broke the barrier of the 200 days. So right here was a good place to be buying when it went to 878, 877, uh, right in that range. And of course, that's where I decided to come in on it. And I hope that uh, you were looking at the charts that I showed this afternoon because I kind of came around showing people, hey, you better take a look at this because I think it's getting ready to launch. And sure enough, it did. So uh, now, again, I'm no financial advisor, so do not take my word for it. You are be wise to be, you know, make sure you do your own due diligence and uh, don't, uh, you know, necessarily like I, I always say, don't dive into a position. I like to see people make a moderate move in. And, uh, you know, it's just like when you're playing your poker hand, you know, as, as the cards come to you, if they get better and better in your suit looks better and stronger than, you know, you keep going in with your wager, if you will, that would be a comparison. And the same thing would apply to a stock when it's on the move, uh, and especially one like this. Now, when you're talking about one-day charts, let me go over to this point right here, and I'll zoom in here, move it over. Right here on the left, down here low, I'll move it over a little more. Look, look at how low the volume was back here. 612 was the date, so May the 12th, but up to that time, this is what I wanted to show folks. There was very little volume that was making it make this move up that it made, but all of a sudden, you know, uh, the volume, as you can see across here, just started pouring in. And uh, so what I wanted to point out was that on this move, when it jumped from where it was at 815 all the way up to 882, the volume was relatively low just prior to that. And so it built in kind of fast. And I thought, I think it might've caught a lot off guard. And then when they thought they were going to pull it down here, as you can see, they came at it real hard uh, t today from uh, 1130, 1132. Uh, you can see, uh, man, they just came at it so hard. And they ran it right down to that solid 200-day moving average line. And then boom, <laughs> After that, you can just see what took place. It just really took off. So uh, this morning, the triple crossover occurred, 612. You can see it right there today. And now it is springboarding. And you can see this stair step move. I'll move it down just a little if I can. There we go. This is classic bull controlled stair stepping right here. 
Now, if you're a day trader like I am, you can definitely take advantage of this. And I've shown some of you some of this in the past, but this is a really great example of it. I've looked back over the longer term charts and see when they make these big hits, how far does it move down? Okay, this is good to know. So here, right here, you can see if you look over on the right, on the over there, right over there, you can see where it is, the price was, when it was uh, the last time high, about around 915. If you look back over here, right there, and then how far were they able to pull it back down to? 876, 25 cents and 15, 35, 40 cent move. So there's a 40 cent drop there, okay? Now, in the future, if it starts to really get hammered, then you're going to be probably looking for that same amount. Does that make sense to you? I hope it does. So uh, if you're going to be smart, you're going to keep your eye on this right here, this moving average lines as they come to this right here, the green line, which is my 200-day moving average. And uh, that's how I indicate this. And just for those of you that might be new, uh, over here up the top left where I have my cursor now, indicators is where you can put these averages in. You click moving average, and then you can pick a 10-day, which I have on mine is purple right there. Save. I'm not going to do it now, but that's how you choose these different averages. And when you move in here, they can be very helpful. You can actually see here, uh, I'm going to explain a little bit, my, my orange line here, that is a, actually my 50-day, and the blue one just above that, right there, that is actually my 45-day. And the reason that I run a 50-day and 45-day moving average together is because the 45-day is a shorter term, just that much shorter, but gives more of an indicator of the movement that's happening. So if you look back over here, for example, when it was 2.33 in the afternoon, I'm watching that blue 45 shorter day term. And hopefully you can see this, um, zoom in a little bit closer, but I'm watching this closely right here as this crossover is occurring. And then you can see the 45 days start to gap away from the, the 50 day orange one or gold one. So, uh, there's there's what I'm using, and I'm showing you how these charts benefit me. But let me show you another benefit of the chart. Right here, I'm going to start looking at this price here. It was at 898, pulled back to how much? To 895, three cent pullback. Up here, it's this at 910. How much does it pull back? A seven cent pullback. Right here, 914. What does it pull back to? 909. All right, nothing. Five five cents. Right here, you got 914 pulls back to 904, a 10 cent pullback. Then right here, 919. Let me get get in here a little closer. Right here, you can see on the, on the right, 919 pulled back to 912, a 7 cent pullback. So I'm looking at these amounts of these pullbacks, and this gives me a gauge. So you can see this pullback from this point to here was almost identical from this pullback to this one. Again, this one to this one. And if you're day trading, you're swing trading these, and you're keeping your solid core position of, say, you know, 5,000 shares or however many you can afford as your core, but you're trading, you know, maybe 500 to 1,000 shares at each one of these swing points because you can see the pattern. It's a seven cent. Oh, it's seven cents. Oh, seven cents. Oh, this one, it fell on down. But now we're seeing it ascend here in the after hours. And part of the reason that I wanted to show you this. Now, this is the most important chart of all, though. This is, as I said, never was really quite a crossover move. I think we'd have to go further back down the chart. Let's pull this back now. And you can't even see where the crossover occurred, but let's try going to a longer term, the three month. There you go. There is where the triple crossover occurred on May 31st, or you might say June the 1st. You can see the 10 day purple average moving line. The blue and orange are practically on top of each other because it's just the 45 and 50 day. But look at that 200 day, the green one. Once this crossover occurred, look at the volume, look at the green candlesticks, because guess what? There's a lot of people that are big fish out there that are watching for this type of triple crossover, which occurred on the three month chart. But more weight is added to each triple crossover on a longer term. So well, let me explain. If you were to be on the one month chart, you can see a little movement on the five day chart. Let's see if we can find one. Well, you really can't, but this is kind of an example of where it was. If the crossover came up over it right there, you can see how far it moved on up from there. It was a nice little move from 818 up to 
uh, and nine of them in it. So that's what crossovers can do on a longer term chart. Why am I saying this? Look at the one year chart. We're going to go right over here, right here up at the top, one year. There is a triple lock upside crossover on a one year chart. And the reason for today's volume is because the big fish, again, the longer the term, which is a one year term, the longer the term, the more the movement. And this is a critical point. You can actually see the green 200 day moving average line right there, very solid right there. You can see the 45 and 50 day moving averages crossing up over together, the 10 day. And look how acute this 10 day moving average line is. But the difference this time, folks, on that last run up, it didn't have the volume. It was way, it was much lower volume. Look at each time that it's hit right here. Look, for example, here in July, look at the 27th, 26th. Look at the volume, how low it was down here at the bottom where my cursor is. You can see the volume is very low compared. Look at the volume here, folks. This is what I'm pointing out and I've been pointing out. This is why I think we're going to have a mega spike on this stock. And uh, many of them have, like I said, are naysayers and, you know, it can't be compared to AMC or GME or whatever, but I think it certainly can because, and I've said this on my last video, I'll reiterate it right now. I hope it doesn't bore you. You can fast forward past it if it does. But what I want to reiterate is right here in particular, if we go back into 2021, look over here on the on the right right there. You can see the price was $22,190. I mean, I mean 22,000. <laughs> don't have, don't we wish $22 uh uh right here 22.90 and 22.97 all right my mistake but anyway i'm only pointing this out because as it started to fall look over here first there was very little volume again on this move to get to that point there's such little volume down here compared to what we're looking at over here in the current space and time so i i point this out because this is a little bit of volume here can make it move like this just think what the volume might might do that we might see come in even more. And why sh should there be more increased volume? Well, hopefully this is the part you'll like. After it started falling, of course, a lot of hedge funds and big people came in and started shorting, uh, I believe. And this is all just my opinion and my scenario, but especially right here when it hit the $15 mark in December or so of 2021, look how quickly after that point in time, it dropped and dropped. But more importantly even, look at all the red down here. I'll move this over. Look at all the massive red here because of these, I believe, this volume that was surging was created by the shorters. I'm, I'm, I'm certain of it. And they were making a lot of money, but they're, they were in these positions shorting so heavily at this price range right in here where you see these. And right now, if you look at there, we're already at this range going on the upside to the upside. So all of these people, and basically from this point right here, this is about equal. Let's get over to where we are. Let's make sure we're comparing apples to apples. We'll get down here to $9 and something right around there. We're close. Anyway, so from here to the right of this cursor, all that red there that you see that these people shorted and they shorted when they when SoFi came out and beat the street with their last earnings call, call and had a higher revenue. I mean, they beat the street and they fell 20%. So they were shorting very heavily at that time. This was right after the article of them beating the street and their, their earnings call. And then the guy comes out and says, oh, the price of the stock is only worth two fifty, two dollars and fifty cents. And well, boom, you all saw it drop. You all know what happened, or many of you do. Uh, but anyway, that analyst uh, is probably hiding somewhere in a hole. And uh, at this stage of the game, uh, Webbush, I think is the name of the company he was with, uh, they're, they're probably also kind of a little bit uh, on the embarrassed side. And they might want to get somebody to come along and give an analyst review that uh, hire someone new. And, and he might be able to look at the real facts and then give them what they deserve. And an upgrade would be fair, don't you think? So anyway, let's just take a look here, though. 
the reason I say everyone from this point on over here, there's so many shorters right here in this price range right here where we are. Look at all these red candlesticks right in here in the six, seven, all these people were shorting it. I think they thought they were going to short this thing right down into non-existence. And, uh, and you know what? Thank God at that point in time, we got Anthony Noto coming in. He supports the stock. He buys tons and tons of shares of it at the $4.72, I think is where I, I believe he got in in a lot of shares. And the guy already owned millions of dollars uh, worth. I mean, he's got 6.4 million shares. This guy's dedicated to his company and he stands behind it and steps in and, and bought like crazy. And Dolly, you got to just love a company that has somebody that stands behind their you know, CEO that's not going to let it get just walked all over and shows people that he, he has a belief in this company. So I won't go too much further into that. But uh, what I want to show you here, though, is this over here. Look at the volume here on this move compared to what we saw over on the left, which was minuscule comparatively. And so this is the reason I think that all of these people who were shorting from the 915 range to that all the way down to nine, uh, what was it, uh, eight, it was, they were even higher. All these people here that were shorting from this range all the way down to the 450 price, which it hit after that uh, downgrade, all of those individuals now, I believe, are still holding those shorted positions. But once we get up here, and we start put knocking on the doorstep of all this volume that shorted. And some of these are already taking hits from here in this range, I believe. And they're still holding and hoping. But they're not going to hold on to these things forever. I can guarantee you that. And my belief is that as we get beyond this and crack 10, all these people that were shorting here in this range, still holding those positions. And they even doubled down when it got down to 450 or whatever. So they're, they're, they were really trying, you know, a lot of them to... Uh, so they've averaged down, but now they got themselves in a pickle. So some of these people, I believe, they're finding themselves in a sweaty situation. And uh, this is why I'm calling for a big, big, big move. And what I'd really like to see is it might happen after today with so much movement on this and uh, some attention and all the eyes and all the coverage. There's a possibility that the Reddit boys, and if they rally their, their horses and team members around this, then look out, you know, and uh, so whew, I'm excited about it. I'm glad for everybody that, uh, you know, might have taken my advice. It looked at my uh, uh, earlier video today and uh, that I posted a, a short that was only less, less than a minute long. But I pointed out right then that I thought we were ready to see a springboard. And sure enough, look at that move. Look at that chart. This is just beautiful. Uh, and again, this is the one year term. And we just blew right past whatever this was back on uh, February the 6th, where there was some resistance at 738. You could forget about it. And uh, so, hey, it's still my uh, word to you to be cautious. Do not just climb, you know, and don't dive in. You know, like I said, wait in, take a position if you want, and then ride it a while and see what happens. Watch the volume, because I tell you what, volume is always going to uh, outweigh efforts, I believe, in most cases, especially when you've got this much momentum uh, and you've got this many shorted positions that might start want to uh, buy their ways out because they sold to get in. They got to buy to get out. And that's just the way it works. And I think a lot of them are really, really, and probably why we're even seeing a lot of them here in the after hours making this move to get on out of here. So, uh, well, that's pretty much it. I think that's going to end it up. Uh, you can, most of you can say farewell uh, because I'm just going to touch back for people that might be new. I'm going to come over here and just do a quick summary on this stock. And that means what I'm going to do is come over and show you uh, the earnings and, uh, and so forth, show you their financials a little bit over here, what everybody's saying as far as the analysts, the 14 that are on here, strong buys, buys. And uh, so you can see here, the re this is just incredible revenues. It, during COVID, by the way, 442 million, 565 million, 977 million. The folks, this is twice what they had two years earlier. And then they go from 977 million to 1.52 billion. And on top of that, now we have the, all the uh, student loans 
that are going to be uh, coming uh, due and uh, their possibilities are just so wide open for refinancing on those loans and giving people uh, very good alternative ways to string it out for longer terms and make it easier on them. They're going to be, <laughs> well, that's probably what, that's all, all I really need to say. You just, you can see this is probably going to continue to climb even here. I hope in the after hours, maybe not. And again, nothing I ever say is set in stone. I do not have a crystal ball. I am no, uh, you know, foreseer. I am just simply looking at the charts. I'm looking at the volume and just stating my case. And I hope that if you find this type of um, information helpful, that you will definitely give me a thumbs up to help this get shared with other people. Because for everyone to hear it and to benefit from it, like you might be doing, then it, it gets shared by the algorithm if you thumbs up or make comments. And I'm always very welcome for your comments. I would appreciate to hear from you whatever you may have to say, whether you're in agreement with my ideas or you disagree. Uh, I just really appreciate you coming by here and giving me your time because it, it is does take time, but time is money in this case. And uh, so that's pretty much it. Uh, if you'd like to help uh, without a way for me to have any monetization because I have only uh, you know a limited number of subscribers, it's building and I'm very grateful. Let me say thank you to all of the people who have given me a subscription here lately. And it's just really been climbing. And I feel very encouraged by that. And uh, over a hundred and so in, in a couple of weeks. And that, that really will put me pretty close to a thousand very quickly. So if you want to help, I'd sure, sure appreciate it. Uh, but there's another way you can help because I'm actually an original music artist. I've been uh, making my own music, have several CDs out in the market. I'm online on Amazon, Google Play, uh, Spotify. And so I do some very interesting tunes. I think you'll find them uh, uplifting, energetic, happy, most of them. And uh, so um, I hope you'll take the time uh, to drop by there and subscribe because if you do and you give a listen every once in a while, there I can actually, you know, get a, um, a little bit to help me fund doing this type of work. And uh, I put a lot of uh, time and energy and effort doing all the research. And I hope that you'll consider doing that. And uh, that would be very kind of you. And if not, that's okay too, because I'm just glad and I'm grateful for uh, being able to help people and hopefully, um, you know, help them in their financial ways, because it can be a, a very choppy uh, situation out there with the market. It, it's just been so it's so crazy and so volatile. So hopefully this guidance will help you out. And uh, I, again, I appreciate the thumbs up. Appreciate you hitting that notification bell because when I post up the next video and I'm going to be showing, showing some other uh, information on other stocks very soon, um, it's best to kind of diversify. And I am diversified. I'm also into uh, Caribbean cruise. Um, <laughs> Caribbean cruise. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Billy Ocean would be <laughs> happy to hear that. But Carnival Cruise Line and, uh, and Norwegian Cruise Line. And I'm still, I'm going to start showing you a little of information about this stock right here. Let me just jump over. This is called BMR. I spoke to you on a couple of past videos. They get very little volume. If you look at their volume, it's absolutely very low. If you looked over here, 91,000 shares today. But there's something about it that has my attention. They're actually showing a bullish pattern on momentum over here. All the arrows look pretty good. But let me show you this thing about this stock here that really gets my attention the most. If you look down here, you can see they only have 12 million shares outstanding, 12.88 million. And if you could look here, held by insiders is 64.93%. That gets my attention a little. There, there's held by institutions is 8.34%. So that's not a lot at all, but that gets my attention and uh, I really like it. So I'm bringing this up uh, for anybody that wants to dabble in this. I would suggest this is just something like they play money. Don't get too you know, crazy, but who knows? The volume might continue to get higher and higher if others decide to come along on this. And um, it, it moves around a lot. You know, it, it, when you get this kind of low volume, you can be easily manipulate it up and down. But this thing swings like you wouldn't believe. 266 today. And then it, it went almost up to three and then back down. And then it goes over three. I saw 317. You know, so 
I mean, not today, but if you look back over the chart, you can see here at one time, this was at $5.99 a share. So uh, I just think it's something worth keeping an eye on. And if we start seeing some volume increase on this, uh, I'll definitely be coming in with it on it. So if everybody else, hey, I just, you know, something for you to consider. Uh, but look at the market here today. The S&P up nicely, the Dow up, the NASDAQ up, Russell up. It's just wonderful. And uh, this gas, 6734, makes me wonder... <laughs> Last time this price was around back in the whenever it was, I wonder what gas was at the pump at that time. Hey, if you want, and you know, the last time crude oil was at 67.34, what the price of gas was, I'd be curious to know. But uh, anyway, that's pretty much it. I hope that you have a great evening. I hope you have a prosperous future. And most of all, I hope you have a healthy life. So there you go. Bye-bye now.